Afternoon everyone and welcome back to the uh, channel. New video today, not about cars though. Um, this video is not going to be edited in any way, no chops or changes, because it's to answer a few questions and hopefully to help a few people along the way. I recently got asked why the channel is called Peg Leg Motoring and it's kind of joke because I've only got the one leg um, which leads me on to what I was really going to talk about today which is PTSD, anxiety and depression because I suffer with all of them I have good days, I have bad days, I have days where I'm hiding in the bedroom terrified of everything now, I know on YouTube there are channels about PTSD, how to help yourself, what it feels like, but they're all from psychologists, psychiatrists, people who've never suffered from it. And I just think, yeah, they've been, they've read books, they've spoke to people who've got it but they haven't got the lived experience of PTSD. And I'm, I'm shaking thinking about talking now. I decided to do it today because I am, I've had to stop working because I just, I'm really struggling. Um, the first thing I can say to anyone who's got PTSD and is struggling or know someone who's got it and he's struggling is you do need help I, I mean I've had CBT and I've had EMDR unfortunately the CBT made me worse and the EMDR has helped I don't get the flashbacks now but I still got a lot of issues um, anyone who's got it and hasn't sought help or has it or you know someone first thing you need to do go to see a doctor now if you can't see a doctor and you're in the UK go on to the internet type in your local um, council um, with talking services now when you go on there you register you put in your mental state details it's a, it's all no one else can see it and then they get back to you you go in for an assessment they decide on the best treatment and they get cracking on it uh sorry for the squeaks of dogs walking in and out um how can i do the best describe ptsd to those who haven't dealt with it experienced it and to the specialists who give us the treatment without any knowledge and yesterday for instance I got up started working on a car absolutely no problems whatsoever didn't give a second thought to anything then Last night I was watching something on TV and I, I know especially say um, don't do avoidance of things that can remind you what happened to you but I do and the proof was last night that I was watching something and uh, it did bring back a lot of memories, I turned it off put a comedy on, lighten mood or thing a bit. But then when I went to bed, I just could not settle, uh, lump in the throat, shaking, and I had to take um, a diazepam because I, just, I could not switch off. My brain was reliving everything over and over, but not in a flashback kind of way that people talk about with PTSD. It's just like, a, how did... I end up in that situation why was it me that got the 
all the damage done, how did I survive it when other people die from the same sort of thing? And these are sort of things that go through your mind. Um, and it's all very well when a specialist said, they'll, they'll turn around to you and say, you've got to forget about that sort of thing. You've just got to look at the positive side of things. And we've got to train your brain to file away all the bad stuff. But yeah, I guess their thinking is your brain stores memories. You just need to file them away in an order to try and uh, help yourself. But there's some things that you just burn in your memory. I mean, any of you who have had um, children, you, there's no way you could ever rationalise your feelings or forget about the fact you've had a kid. That's, in my head, that is what it's like with the PTSD. No matter how much someone tells you, they can fix you. The experience is there and... You'll have your days where um, you're really struggling. And the specialist will say, well, do your safe space thing with the EMDR. You're sort of tapping like this while you're imagining you're in this um, place. Slowing down your breathing and everything and it fixes it all. Uh, but it just doesn't work like that and it destroys your days sometimes it can destroy your weeks just because some people will think of it as self-pity it's just a sort of this mindset that you want to do you you've set out tasks you want to do for the day but there's part there's something in your brain it's just won't let you move on to that because even when you try to get into it you're not motivated and what started off bugging you is still bugging you constantly and if you've got physical reminders as well that doesn't really help things um yeah it, it's one of those subjects where science will tell you one thing, doctors will tell you another, there are the myths in between, you've got the sufferers, but then some people suffer in different ways to others. I used to have flashbacks of being there, um, coming around with all the beeps um, from all the machines, um, realizing that I hadn't, I was thinking, where's my right arm and everything, because I'd caused massive uh, nerve damage as well to my right side and uh, given me epilepsy, um, which again screws things up a bit. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say with the video is if you're suffering or if you know someone that's suffering don't just look at a book or watch YouTube videos it's not going to help um, you need to talk although I, I don't rate the specialists but that might be my own personal experience um, and CBT and EMDR don't work for everyone. I know everyone says, oh, you CBT and then you'll be fine. Yeah, for a lot of people it is, but it doesn't work for everyone. And then you've got to sort of create a lifestyle that will let you get as far as you can in life. Um, the other thing you can do is talk to other people who've got PTSD um it can be difficult so obviously everyone's got it for different reasons different situations but at least you you'll know then that you're not alone 
um, and the things that you're dealing with daily, um, it doesn't make you a freak. Um, doesn't mean that everyone sees you like as a special needs case or anything like that. You you just gotta. Um, I guess you've just got to go through the system and then hopefully the system will work for you but you've got to be 100% and it is brutal reliving everything so that they can try to file it in your memory in the right way so it doesn't just a sound doesn't trigger you or um, a certain situation doesn't trigger you But once you've been through those things, if you're still feeling like crap, you're not alone. There are quite a few of us that do have our bad days. All I can say to you is like, well, this is my first attempt at just talking to random strangers. And maybe it might help someone because they feel the same way. But I've just, I can't do anything today because my brain's just not not concentrating properly other than hitting record on this camera um so a friend's coming around later just to joke around a bit because sitting on your own as well it might make you feel safer well, it does make you feel safer but it also allows your brain to be really going round and round and round and round Whereas if you've got someone with you um, who you know isn't coming for the sympathy but is to come come around just chat shit, shoot the breeze, um, nothing to do with your experiences or how you're feeling at the moment, just something that diverts your attention away, then you can kind of move on a bit and it, it's strange how you c that'll happen like tonight, I know that when we're, I'm chatting with my mate later, because we just joke around, even when I'm in a crap mood, somehow I've got friends that can bring out the funny side and they'll point out stuff that I'm ranting about, unrelated, and turn that into jokes. Obviously, mood lightens, I go to bed, I'll get a good night's sleep, and tomorrow... Uh, hopefully I'll be fine again it's all just gone and I'll be able to get things done with uh, no distractions no doubts um, so yeah I mean again with disabilities I suppose I could talk about that is how you're seeing I mean I can't get a job working for a company. I've got a master's degree. I've got so much experience. But losing a leg, having pretty much zero nerve function down the right side and uncontrolled epilepsy, no company will take me on. Um, which I see the point, because the insurance companies wouldn't want to touch you. And you've got an employee who you don't know if they're going to turn up one day to the next and if they do turn up are they going to end up going home and well going off to hospital in an ambulance because they've had a fit and they're not breathing um by the way big up to the ambulance services and nurses i know they've been on strike press are giving them a bad name but they work really really hard so if you ever see stuff in the news on the newspapers don't buy into all the crap that they're just being greedy. They're not. They're massively overworked. But I'm going off topic. Yeah, with your disabilities, find your comfortable level. Find out for yourself what you're capable of. Don't tell. Don't let people tell you, oh, you can't do this because of this. You can't do... I've had to accept there's a lot of stuff I can't do. And at 47, I'm pretty Britain off already. 
Um, but for a lot of you, there's still jobs out there. There's so many jobs in the country that you may look at and think, oh, I can't do. Get the training. I mean, local colleges do free training courses for amazing stuff now. I mean, I'm a car nerd. Um, my local college does all the MVQ levels to be for the big one at the moment is for training to be an EV mechanic because there's barely any of those. So if you're mechanically minded and you can physically move about, go for something like that. Find out what you can do and what an employer will take you on for. Get the training in that and a lot of it is free. Um, if you're lucky enough to have plenty of money behind you, I guess you could start up your own company, although if you're like me, it'd be a real struggle um, because of the fact you can't guarantee delivery times, dates, anything like that. I could be out of action for a week. Um, could be dead, <laughs> kind of ruins the job then. Um, but yeah, all I can say is I hope you watch this. You'll probably think, God, this he's rambling loads of crap because I know I'm rambling. Um, but I just hope you'll take a bit from it about getting the treatment. It, it won't always work, but you're not alone. You've just got to have the friends around you who see you as you they don't see you as you with this condition and don't believe the people who are just going to write you off because you can get this i mean there's lads and they've been they've lost all of their limbs in iraq or if afghanistan they're still doing stuff now i mean there's um one group of lads, can't remember which regiment they're from, they um, were training for the Paris Dakar. All of them are missing limbs. So don't lose hope. And whenever you need to talk to someone, talk to someone. If you've watched this video and you feel any link towards your, how you're feeling to what I'm feeling, Leave a comment, I'll get back to you, or message me, we can chat, not a problem. Might even be a case of if enough people respond, we could do a live session on YouTube, just discussing it all, that anyone can look in on and see how we are, the stuff we have to deal with every day. Um, yeah, can't really think of anything else to say that would be of any use and that doesn't come across as self-pity. So I'm going to leave you with this rather depressing visit video, but I hope it does help someone somewhere and gives you that little bit of a lift or maybe a kick up the arse that you need. Good luck to everyone who's suffering or who has family members or friends suffering. It's a really long road, a really tough fight that you've got to really be up for. But you've always got to hope that you are going to reach the finishing line of this really long ultra marathon that is PTSD and depression and anxiety. Good luck to you all and hope my rambling has helped a bit. Bye.